Hello, I'm so excited to welcome you today to this hour-long presentation. So I give a lot of free webinars and a lot of free calls, but one of the struggles that I always have is that I feel so blessed to have reached people all over the world. So we have people from Australia and people from California and I'm on the East Coast and it's hard to find a time where busy moms can all show up. So I'm doing this little experiment where I'm pre-recording this class for you guys, but then I'm going to be in the chat sort of all day long so that you guys can chime in and leave comments and ask questions. And you can do that right here below this video. And you can also, if you're not part of the Healthy Moms Meetup, I'm going to have conversations going on in there all day too. I think they're going to be a little bit easier to follow in there. So um, if you want to come in there, you know, that just might make it a little easier. If you have a comment or a question, I'll very easily be able to answer it right below this video. I'm just not quite sure yet how, how conversations go. So I'm super excited and I hope everyone can make the time to spend an hour today doing this work because I think you will love it. So pretty much it's a constant, <laughs> not battle, but a constant awareness we have to cultivate to really be able to say yes to cooking on a regular basis as a busy mom who, you know, wants to spend time with her kids, has work they want to do, you know, has all, we have all these other things. And sometimes food feels like that thing that we just have to do. And my goal in life is to sort of change that, change that point of view. And make it something that's an honor to do, that it's something that we have this privilege that we can do for ourselves and that we can pass on to our kids. And I'm going to get into my story in a minute, but that's coming from someone who did not know how to cook an egg just seven years ago. So let's jump in. So before I get to my story, I just want to say that some of the things, like when I say food, I feel like it's a loaded topic and it's really about getting meals on the table. But I just want to say a few things that I've noticed a shift in since really stepping into food. Everything from how my kids are doing in school, sibling rivalry, which is by no means perfect in our house, but definitely I see a difference with different foods my gene size, the amount of sick days my kids have missed from school, the amount of sick days I've had, doing dishes, how I can show up in my marriage, and then I'm going to get into like the big things right now in my story, but those are just some of the things that I've seen huge impacts of your energy, huge impacts both in my life and our family, and a lot of the people who have been part of this Plant Simple Meals community. So what I want you to hear today is that really these small changes to how and what we eat can impact so many aspects of our lives in a big way, even though they're just little small changes. So let me dive into my story and then I'm going to get very quickly into lots of strategies for you, but I'm going to kind of map them back to my story and what I learned from what, what I've been through. So seven years ago, I really had everything that I was supposed to have, you know, I should have put that in quotes, or wished I had. Um, I had wished for them on paper, you know, so like flipping through magazines, like all those things that as a little girl you want, I had them. I had this fabulous husband who I met in high school, who thank God could cook. I had three very young children who were adorable and loved every inch of them and probably hid behind them at that point. I had a thriving business, but kind of s sort of secretly, because I felt bad about it, I was pretty miserable. And my three pregnancies, really it all happened in the first one, but then I never had time to catch up. In the fir my first pregnancy, I think I gained a hundred and something pounds. But my three pregnancies left me 85 pounds heavier than I had ever been. and. And that was a lot and you know I'm sure some psychologists could break down like what I was going through then based on that but but that was sort of the most 
tangible thing that I could put my hands on at the time of what was going on with me. And I felt really guilty that I wasn't happy because once you sort of start checking all these things off your list and you feel like you have what you wanted, like especially these beautiful kids, especially when it's around people, right? Beautiful kids, amazing husband. You kind of feel guilty that you're not happy. Like, who am I not to be happy, right? But I wasn't. And, but in that discomfort, I found what it is that I want to share with you today. So it all, it all worked out for a reason. So let me give you the highlights and then I'm going to get into how they pertain to you as we head into the summer months because this is an amazing time to think about your health. So it all started one day. It didn't all start. It was, you know, added up over the course of six years. But one day I was sitting at my desk doing my work and it was about three o'clock and I looked over on my sort of like, I'm a designer, so I, I had a graphic design company was my business and my, my desk looked the part, except over on the side of my monitor, there was seven coffee cups stacked on top of each other. And I had stacked them each time I had finished a cup of coffee or left the office to go to Starbucks to buy a cup of coffee. So I just looked at those and I was thinking, man, I spent a lot of money on coffee today. And wow, I'm tired. It's three o'clock and I can't even imagine that I have to go home and be a mom and cook dinner and love these four people who I love dearly so much. Like I just wanted to go crawl into bed and take a nap. And that was sort of my turning point. That was my point where I was like, you know what? I, I cannot do this anymore. First of all, I can't afford that much coffee every day. Second of all, it wasn't making any difference. And third of all, like my family deserves better than this. So that led me the next day to just go to yoga. Like I was overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. And that was a place that I had before my pregnancies found great solace. So I found a new studio and it was hot. And so I figured I was challenging myself to do something new. And in that class, a bunch of things just like came together in my head, just sort of when I let it myself quiet down. And one of the things was that I had to meet the teacher who was teaching the class. And I met her and we worked together to sort of create what I like to call as my final diet because she kind of told me what to do at the beginning. But then that was the first time that I felt good enough that I could make food my own. So, so it was amazing. And from that day on, I, I changed the way I ate I just overnight. So by changing the way I ate, and we're going to get into what I ate a little bit later, but I just don't want to make this all about me. I need it to be about you. So by changing what I ate, I lost the weight. Like I tell people overnight, but obviously it wasn't overnight, but it, it really, it wasn't stressful to lose the weight. I had had to lose, I had thought I wanted to lose weight at other earlier times in my life. And it had always been like, it was hard. It was what I was thinking about. This very quickly, because the food was the center, um, very quickly didn't become about the weight. I got my period, which you're like, yeah, you had three kids. Of course you did. But I had never had that happen to me without taking medicine. And it was a medicine that made me kind of kooky. And that had never happened. And it, it happened three days into the food change. Um, allergies. So I also, another medicine I took constantly was at that time, I think it was Clarit Clarendon, which was a prescription drug at the time. I took it quite regularly. And if it got really bad, I would take a Benadryl, um, which made me super tired, but I would take because I literally couldn't stop sneezing. And it was seasonal allergies. It had nothing to do with food allergies. It was seasonal allergies. And those really have pretty largely gone away. Um, and that happened pretty, pretty quickly. And my skin cleared up. That was really within two weeks. So I had had a lot of bumps, a lot of like redness. I just felt like I was glowing. And a few months into my food journey, I went to the dentist. And I just remember the hygienist being shocked because usually at my annual or biannual checkup, you know, she had a lot of work to do. And this time there wasn't so much work to do and there was no cavities and she was pretty psyched. And the energy part was the part that I got the quickest. It was h really hard probably the first two or three days because my body was detoxing from all this coffee and sugar. But 
pretty much right after that I felt this amazing sense of energy and I just had no idea like no idea that food had this power and it was amazing to experience so I, I stayed on that course for quite a while um, and we'll get into that a little bit later as well but another thing that happened at a similar time is that my daughter was not thriving so I have three kids in the middle one um, she had awful eczema and she was having some behavior issues at preschool and the doctors at that point you know were dishing out creams left and right to help the eczema and we were talking about you know how to get her assessed and figure out how to best help her in her behavior but my gut just kept telling me like look at food look at food and so we started taking stuff out of her diet and I'll never forget we took dairy out first I'll, I'll share that with you and um, I mean it's not like I'm trying to hide anything I'll share everything by the end I just don't want to get get derailed here but um, so we took out dairy and I remember getting a call you know a week later from the preschool teacher you know saying what did, what did you do and the eczema did go away within five days um, but so much more changed and for her we ended up on this longer journey of it started with dairy and then it, it, it ended also with gluten um, and we found out she was allergic to things like red dye and we actually found out she was allergic to the whole cow so the meat and the dairy so this is what I want to say to you and to me and to all of us parents out there I feel like we have a unique opportunity which is almost at its the most powerful point it's ever been in history to really plan for success like in our lives in our business in our families for our, for for the world one meal at a time that food really has this amazing power and I used to feel like you know it was my duty you know at the beginning of all this I used to say it's our duty to do it but I feel like that's such a derogatory word I feel like it's our you know it's our privilege it's our opportunity it's this this thing that we have power over that we let go power of a while back which is our health and I really think that we all just need to jump on board and that's what the rest of this is going to be about sort of how to make that feel a little bit easier because it's I definitely know it's a daunting task so I'm going to share with you three ideas today that each have sort of some parts under them and then I'm going to culminate um, with uh, sort of tying that back into my story and, and an offer for you. So, and you have worksheets, so there'll be places within this where I'll say that you can pause and you can go in and fill those in or you can listen to the whole thing and then you'll sort of have a gist and you can fill the worksheets in after. But I just want to say that writing down things will definitely help you make them happen faster than watching and thinking. This is really about like doing. So writing, cooking, shopping, all those things are going to be the things that get you to healthy faster. So idea number one is that it's not our fault, but we are the only ones who can make the change and we have to. So let's dissect that a little bit. The It's not our fault part. The odds have been stacked against us, right? Like, there is a reason that we are eating bad. And it, I don't want anyone to feel guilty. I don't want anyone to feel guilty even after they know this information ever. That's not the point. The point is to just keep setting intentions, keep, tr keep looking at food in an intentional way, and just doing the best that we can, and knowing that we have this power and that we can change it but also understanding that really the odds have and are stacked against us there have been years of misinformation due to lack of knowledge um, and and just passing it on like that's just what we do as human beings so from milk to big farming and you know milk is is a big one it's a big one as parents um, and we're gonna get into dairy later but from an advertising perspective it all started as an advertising campaign and it just kept perpetuating and then at some point it became so strong that you know our doctors started believing it and 
you know, we started believing it, and it's, it's everywhere that, that milk does the body good, right? Remember that? And there's so much research now that shows that, you know, we don't need milk, and we can get that from other things, and, and there's, it might be doing more harm than good. And also the, the, the idea about big farming, like that really made it so that our government wasn't supporting what was best for us because we were profiting off of all wheat, the wheat industry and the soy industry and all these things. And I'm not saying that none of these things are things that you can ever have. We're going to get into the food part in part three. But I just want to say that a lot of what we hear isn't correct. And then it comes to us in very loving ways too. And it co comes to us in loving ways like from our grandmother, right, who's just taking in the information that she got in those beautiful, you know, posters that came out in, during, <laughs> during World War II about how we had to have these things. And she made these amazing brownies and they had this amazing impact on us. And we wanted them really bad, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good. So part of, you know, this idea is really letting go of our food stories and really getting intentional in our families. And that's going to become a lot about both deciding what it is that you want for your family and then tuning into your body so that you can actually let the food speak instead of these past stories about what's right speak. And you know, some of the things we've inherited are that I told you about milk, sort of how a plate is made and that you know, a big chunk of meat always has to be the center of it. And that really came from, I think, this idea that, you know, vegetables, all vegetable plates were what poor people did. And once you got meat, you had sort of made it somehow. And I think that just like kept going and kept perpetuating in our society. So really letting go of those stories so that you can move on. And knowing so once we start to let go of those stories, then we sort of have to start to know where our life intersects with food. So another big hitch that we get is that, you know, we, we especially with kids, we're kind of in survival mode and we have these long days that are filled with stuff and filled with activities. And there's a lot of times where food is involved, either at friends' houses or at, you know, little league practices. You know, there's so many different areas of our life where we're offered food and we can't always make conscious choices in the moment in those moments so really understanding where our life intersects with food so we can come in prepared either with food or you know with the knowledge that maybe we're not hungry then so th and we can give our kids those same tools and then we're going to a little bit have to step into the role of marketer and I don't think, and I feel like I have this little bit of advantage that I've been studying marketing for quite some time, both with my design company and with this venture. And I feel like there's a new way of marketing. Um, and I want us to think about that in our family. And it has less to do with pushing ideas on people and you know, making our kids do something, making them finish their plate, making them do this, making them do that, and more with modeling and sharing as much as possible. So I think that the businesses who do that are the most successful right now, and I also think that in a family we can do this. But we really have to step up to that plate of, you know, having you know being our own version a good version of what's happening in the supermarket because in the supermarket kids are constantly bombarded with labels and ideas for what they might want to have and it makes it really hard so <laughs> here's a picture of the cereal aisle I mean it's insane and all of that is put at our kids eyes you know from the cart or from the floor you can see all these boxes and each one of them has like one more amazing character or healthy family or whatever on the front and pretty much none of them serve our body so you know one one action you can take right away is just avoid that art aisle if you're with kids but um, so we really have to think about that because especially I don't know about you but have you ever been to the grocery store you know, you got home, 
everyone's home from school, you get home from work, you're about to dive into dinner, and you open the fridge, and there's stuff in there because you've sort of thought about it, but you're missing like one thing to everything that you could possibly think of pulling together. So it's at that moment at 5.30 or 6 that you have to jump in the car with the kids and go to the store. And these are the moments when we're all hungry, including us. So it's very hard to say no as a mom. And our kids are grumpy, and so they're particularly more you know, in tune to all these things that are coming at them in the grocery store. And, and it's hard. It's hard. So, but really taking, tackling and tackling that first idea and really knowing that we can make this change, you know, letting go, like it's not our fault, but we can make the change. And then I want to move on to idea number two, which is that we can end the overwhelm around food. And this can be achieved by committing to a rhythm. And I particularly want to focus today, for the purpose of this, on that time from six to eight, because I feel like that's a big time of overwhelm. I know that the mornings are too, but I feel like that's another another talk, another hour. I have a lot to say on that too, but let's let's stay focused on this dinner time. And so idea number two is to end overwhelm around food by committing to rhythm. And the first way we can do this is by really knowing what the week holds, like what the following week holds the Friday before. And here's why. It's because the Friday before, it's like the end of a week. So we can sort of assess, like we sort of know what went well and what didn't the week before, which is a really part important part of knowing what comes next. So just taking five minutes and like thinking out, like, you know what? Wednesday was awful because I wanted to cook something really hard and everybody had homework and I got home late and it, there wasn't enough time. Or on the other side of that, Thursday went really well because I was relaxed and the kids and I got to cook together and, you know, that kind of reflection. So you can bring the good into the week after and learn from what you didn't do the week before. And I love doing this on Friday because you can also think a little bit about the weekend so I find even if I plan for a week seven days is a long time in a family so on Friday I can just sort of reassess and make sure you know what's going on on the weekend you know maybe a child got an extra play date or a grandparents coming or whatever and I can sort of wrap my head around that from a food perspective and you know whatever you know I'm thinking from a food perspective at this point and it gives me, I, I tell people it's like a self-care act to just like remove yourself from your world and go sit and plan. And then you can also use the weekend to be prepared for the week after. So if you know on Friday sort of what's going on the final week and the next week and if it's a lot, you know, maybe you're going to be away for part of the week or maybe you're going to, uh, maybe you have a really busy week or the kids have a really busy week at school. So if that's the case, then you have Sunday to grocery shop and prep, and I, I think you should do that anyway, but if, it's, if you know what's happening, then you have the power to do that. So with that information, then you can really cultivate a rhythm for your week and really understand. So, so the first part is really you know planning, almost more like, a calendar wise so you're really looking at what's happening but then you can fit food in and that's the that's really where the gem of all this is is figuring out how your life is and figuring out if you put food first how you can weave it in and in the end you might find out that you're doing too much and you have to like scale back on some things but for the most part you really can create a rhythm that sustains it and one of the ways that I really love, and if you've been around, you've seen this before, but if you've been around, I want you to think about this from a perspective of summer, because right now we're switching from the school year to summer, and I think at this time things change. And so I want you to put on that hat of how your summer looks. And something that's been very, very successful in our house is to really assign a food, a, you know, a not a recipe but like a formula to each day of the week so you know porridge day 
could be oatmeal, could be chia pudding, could be millet, could be a rice pudding, you know, it could be many things that seem porgy. You know, granola day, sometimes we put granola over a smoothie bowl, sometimes we have it with a nut milk, sometimes we have it with fruit or yogurt. So, you know, each of the days can be very different. So think of those big categories. In the summer, maybe you add a grilling day or, you know, at lunch, maybe you have a picnic day. Like, start to really think through those things that you can repeat. And, you know, at the beginning, so for some people, it's easier to do this for every meal every day. For others of you, that's going to be overwhelming. So then I would just recommend, you know, picking three things. Like, you know, every Sunday, you'll have a grill time. Or every Friday, you'll have a pizza, which you could do on the grill, too. Um, or, you know, every Thursday or what some day you'll have a picnic with the kids, whatever it is. But you could pick just some milestones, which also w will help you. So it doesn't have to be everything if that feels really overwhelming. It could just be milestones. And this helps both parties. So this helps parents because I think you'll find that on a normal stress day, if you were to say, shoot, I have to pull together dinner, there's going to be like one or two things that come to your head as easy and they're pretty much you're not going to go very far out of the box of those things but when you have like pasta day which that a pasta dish might have been one of your things you start to think outside the box because you're like all right it's pasta day like how can I make that different how can I use the vegetables that are in season how can I push my kids a little bit to eat something new and you can really start to think um, of how to do that and of course you always have like your old favorites so you know pesto and pasta is an easy very easy one at this point for me to pull together and so we do have that from time to time and on the other side what the rhythm does is especially if you have a eater which if you have more than one kid I'm sure you have one who doesn't love everything it really gives them permission to try um, because that's one of the things that we don't always do as parents. We don't always like, reintroduce foods. So if a child, you know, throws the broccoli across the room, or a toddler, hopefully not a child, but a toddler throws the broccoli across the room, or, you know, a child whines about it for five hours, we're likely, as humans, just not to get that again right away. But sometimes it takes kids seven times to try a food. So if we give them that opportunity to try it again, then we can very often create better eating habits for our kids. So this rhythm really helps our kids to try things again and to feel the security that things are repeating in their life in a world that's like, you know, not always repeating because it's kind of crazy time for kids to grow up. So I want you to take action. I want you to commit to sitting down on Fridays. And right now it's Sunday, so you can do this if you haven't done it already for the week ahead for sure. Um, and maybe if you're seeing this early enough on Sunday, you still have time to sort of prep for the week ahead, or you can use this for next week. Um, if you're wanting to, you can pause. There is in the worksheet packet a, a, a gridded sheet, so you could actually write out what you think your rhythm could be. And you can actually print that sheet more than once, so you could use it once to sort of put those big categories in. And then you could start to use that sheet to actually fill in what you're having for particular weeks and I recommend doing that and then keeping them somewhere so that you know as the weeks go on you can repeat because you do not have to reinvent this wheel every week by any means there's no need to do that so you know if this week you decide you're gonna have this kind of pizza and this kind of salad and you know this kind of smoothie then you have that all documented. You could even write down links to sites that would get you to the recipe that you love or whatever, or maybe you just know it in your head. And then you can pull that out five weeks from now and, and repeat it. So another idea within this idea, um, this idea number two, is to really commit to family dinner. And this may seem like, but this sort of goes against ending overwhelm, which is idea number two, because doing that means that there's so much more that, you know, there's uh, something else to add. Like it's hard enough to get dinner made, much less sit down and eat it together. But I can promise you that this practice has really big impacts 
that are so much bigger than we could even imagine or that our egos could imagine. So from an emotional standpoint, it's been quite studied and a, one of the big studies that came out was from Columbia University from the National Center of Addiction and Substance Abuse. And the findings are pages and pages long, but the gist of it is that children who eat at least five times a week with their family are at a lower risk of developing poor eating habits, weight problems, alcohol and substance dependencies, and they tend to perform better academically than their peers who frequently eat alone. The same study, and that, that you can Google that study and like read about it because it's pages and pages of data, um, but that, that, that same group of people also started interviewing these sort of older teens about it, and they all wanted fa family dinner, and they were interviewing, I think, sort of more, in, they were interviewing sort of inner city teens, and they all seemed like these kids who were sort of rebellious and rough around the edges, and they all said that's the one thing they wished that their parents could do for them, and many of their parents were surprised. So I think it's something that really, you know, it's just, it's that time, and it's, it only has to be 45 minutes. So if that 45 minutes can get your kids like with better eating habits, better grades, you know, less likely to have these all these problems of depression and alcohol dependencies and all these things when they get older, like why wouldn't we do that, right? So obviously it's easy to say that and a little harder to do in practice. So one of the things I love doing is well, look at everything that happens from six to eight and really actually even wider than that. Look at everything that happens from like when you walk in the door, which might be six, might be earlier, to when the kids go to bed, or even when you go to bed, and put dinner at the center of that. And you can make a list of everything that you need to do like in that time frame, and start to see if there's a way that sort of the more busy things can lead up to dinner and the more quiet things can lead out of dinner and into bed. And I think that you'll find that that time will sort of become this benchmark. So instead of always looking at the clock and being like, oh my God, dinner has to be at seven, it's like, no, dinner's after, we've set the table, you know, we've, we've made the salad, and we've done our homework, and we've practiced our instruments. If you have, you know, older kids doing some sort of activity they have to practice, um, or, you know, we've taken a bath, like whatever your order is, you, you come I up with what those things are, and that way, like, if you always know you're going to make a salad for dinner, for example, a child who's younger or who's done with homework or whatever can come spin the salad for you. And it just becomes, this is where we start to create that rhythm I'm talking about, where it becomes more like this beautiful dance instead of this very regimented schedule that we have to follow. So I really recommend looking at that process, and there's a worksheet that will take you through that. So you could press pause right now and do that, or you can wait till the end um, and then go through it knowing what you know now. So the third way to make dinner feel less overwhelming and really to end the overwhelm around food is to create a repertoire of flexible signature dishes. So clearly you could do this for any meal. And a lot of this maps back to that slide of the, the the rhythm of the meals because each one of those is signature dishes right so you know I might have one way that I make porridge fabulously and but the idea behind a signature dish is that I have this base that I make it fabulous but I could add fresh berries if it's strawberry season or I could add blueberries when it's blueberry season so I can switch it up and it can be the same. And I, we're talking about dinner, and I just use an example from breakfast, so let's go to dinner. But the same goes with one of my favorite dinner signature dishes is rice bowls. So literally, they couldn't be more different from each other. You know, sometimes it's chickpeas, sometimes it's black beans, sometimes it's tofu and edamame, sometimes it's lentils. But I always have this same model, and here's the model. It is three-fifths veggies, and usually each one of those fifths is a different veggie, so I might have like, you know, kale, green beans, and squash, or kale, green beans, and carrots, or, you know, here there's corn, cucumber, and um, tomatoes, and then of course I added guacamole, so there's four, but all you need is three. So, you know, three, three veggies, and usually I have three parts, but they could be one part, it could be a big salad one 
and I usually use a plant-based protein but sometimes I add in some animal protein for my kids like once or twice a week but one-fifth that so already that's very different from the plate that we think about most right that that has a big protein in the middle and sort of the vegetables on the side I'm very much making the vegetables the main attraction so one protein and then a, a gluten-free grain so brown rice quinoa millets um, buckwheat there's lots of different grains that you could think about using um, and the possibilities are endless with this dish and it also ma and I and I know that I can just like pull any three veggies from the the fridge or and and I usually always have beans it's just very easy for me to pull together but it never seems the same to my family and another and then I also always make a sauce so I always make a dressing and that should be there's a there's a ideas for this in in the package that you got with this too so you can look at that for the lemon basil dressing I think is what's in there which tastes good on almost anything and the cool thing about having a sauce is that you don't even have to make them complicated you could just steam everything you know sometimes I'm sauteing vegetables and grilling vegetables and doing things fancier but I could just steam them or have them raw and and put some delicious gluten-free dairy-free dressing over it so so that's rice bowls and one thing that has nothing to do with this topic about rice bowls that I want to share is back to that idea of rhythm and picky eaters is that the way I serve these is I don't plate them before we sit at the table I put everything in small dishes around the table like on the table which one gets me sitting for the whole meal and two has everyone serving and I always serve myself sort of first and I'm modeling what it's like to have one-fifth one-fifth you know one-fifth one-fifth three-fifths and it doesn't always start that way so you know depending on the child like one child of mine has always eaten that in fact he probably eats more of the veggies than the rice but another one of my children loves protein and so sometimes she doesn't have the rice but she'll have the protein and she's a little bit more picky about the veggies like she'll always try some but the ratio is definitely not quite the same and then my other one just at the beginning would eat beans and rice so they can grow into it but you're modeling it it's always showing up and I promise by always showing up they want to be like you they w they will eventually start trying these things and you can push them in little ways you can talk about the rainbow you can talk about like the ideal proportions of a plate but you know it doesn't have to be the old school way it can be exciting so I want you guys to take action and there's a place on the worksheets to write this down so you could pause this if you want or you could go through the whole workbook later but I want you to up level your now so in terms of family dinner so I want you to think through everything you've heard and I want you to commit to one thing that you'll do and what I want to say is I don't if if just sitting down to family dinner is your next step it might not be about seven days a week you might commit to two days first or you might commit to five days where one parent is there or you might commit to full weekends of eating together there's a lot of different ways to look at it so just think of the principles that I've shared and figure out what your next step is that you could actually do for the next 21 days so dream a little but 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 really make it something that you could do and that's not to say that you might not have to rearrange some of the ways you do things now or some of the things you're doing you might have to to be able to put food first but just make it doable because obviously you're not gonna like go quit your job or you know pull your kids out of school this week <laughs> like it's it might take a minute and also start to think about how that's gonna shift in summer and how summer is an opportunity to really up level a lot of these things so I love this time of year for really thinking through habits because even if you still work and your kids are in camp all summer long the days are longer the energy is just different in most places produce is abundant and it's just a great opportunity to really lean into some of these ideas so from that I want to share this quote which I share quite frequently so you might have heard me say it before but as parents we want what is best for our children we would never intentionally harm them. 
In fact, we make sure to get them the best possible care, read to them, play with them, and ensure their safety at home, at school, and at play. But when it comes to feeding them, somehow we don't know what's best. Our kids seem finicky and eat nothing but cheese or pasta or chicken fingers or milk and cookies, and we let them. And at the same time, we notice they are frequently ill. They suffer from recurring ear infections, runny noses, stomach aches, and headaches. And we assume, because we see it happening with our friends and family, that it is par for course when bringing up children. But it doesn't have to be so. So this is by D Dr. Joel Furman, who wrote a whole myriad of books, one of which is called Disease Proof Your Child. And this idea was like rocket science to me seven years ago. And now I totally, like I totally get it and I totally see it. And this is where we need to get kind of circle back to s step one and sort of tie everything together. That's why these three ideas really are a trinity. Like they really have to be taken on together because we can't feel guilty about where we've come from and we can't feel guilty about little choices we make. All we can know is that we have to listen to what our body, our hearts, and our minds are really needing and know that there's a better way but not beat ourselves up along the way or feel guilty because that's not modeling great stuff for our kids. But just knowing that we can affect all this stuff and you know I added to that mixed teeth like all these things that we spend a lot of money on spend a lot of energy on you know lose days with can be affected by some simple changes and one of the things that I want to say is that a lot of people say but don't you feel deprived and you know not about this particular thought but just like when I don't have something and the truth is no because I feel so good right now and also I have found solutions like I love chocolate love chocolate so I have found ways to put raw cacao into smoothies that are better than anything I've ever had plus leave me feeling good so this isn't about deprivation this is about adding in things that are amazing they're j it's just a new rhythm and a new way of thinking it's you know or a shift in our thinking but it doesn't mean we won't have enjoyable things. It just means that we might not be able to equate childhood with chicken fingers and milk and cookies. So with that, idea number three is that the food really does matter. And so I want to go through like the three groups that were the most important to me. So I didn't want to share this at the beginning because I didn't want to overwhelm or, or make or separate myself anyway but when I first made my big change what I did was I actually went raw vegan which meant that I basically ate fruits and vegetables and seeds um, and nuts for 18 months and it sounds awful and it's I mean it wasn't awful it's like it was the best thing ever I felt the best ever I, I ended up growing my repertoire from that and definitely adding in cooked stuff um, and and grains and legumes but at the time I needed to take everything out to even understand what food was making me feel because if you would have told me to just have two cookies instead of a bag I never could have my body couldn't have made that decision because my body was really addicted to the seven cups of coffee and the sugar and the cookies and I, I couldn't you can't make these decisions with your mind our mind is always going to want to indulge that's just how we're wired so you really have to be making them with your body and your mind has to be looking forward and thinking about all those things we talked about in idea number one which is sort of the future and thinking of how you want to be so that you're you're eating toward your future self but it's hard to make those decisions in the beginning so gluten is something that not everybody is sensitive to and here I show a beautiful picture of bread because what most people associate gluten with is bread and that you know we can never have bread again but one of the reasons I really want to sensitize everyone to gluten is because it's in a lot more than bread it is in like every processed food it's used as a thickener it's very hard to avoid so 
I really want you guys to become conscious if you ever are buying a box of food, what's in it. And going off of gluten for a week, even the beautiful bread, is a really helpful tool to understand how you feel when you're off it. Um, because it's, first of all, it's really easy. The summer is the easiest time to do this because there's so much stuff to do. And then I think if you can indulge in both amazing smoothies and some healthy sweet treats, you won't miss this at all. Like, you won't even need to do the gluten free route, which is actually what I recommend. If you try this for a week, I recommend that you don't have like gluten free pasta and gluten free crackers and gluten free substitutes. I recommend you just, you know, stick to the fruits and vegetables and the nuts. And with those things, you can make some amazing things that will satisfy like every craving. And then the other thing is dairy. And um, just actually going back to the gluten, um, I think the gluten a lot of times is associated with tiredness and energy. Um, at least it was very much for me. And not everybody's sensitive, but it's not until you go off that you can tell. And you have to go off with an open mind. Um, and it doesn't mean that you'll never have it again, but it means that you know if you have a sandwich for lunch, that then after lunch when you're tired you know why and that's just data you can use to live your best life because if you're about to go off and give a huge presentation or you want to be really present for your child at their birthday you're not going to go have a big piece of bread because you know that it's going to deplete you of some energy so it's just it's just facts just food facts so dairy so dairy is something that is made for baby cows, <laughs> you know, our, our milk dairy. <laughs> and we're people, and cows are bigger than people. And, you know, as I said, this idea came in to our society largely as an advertising campaign um, it, during the war. And then it sort of like got in. I was, I actually interviewed somebody the other day, a, a, a naturopath who went to medical school and said, you know, traditional medical school first, and said that the, the first day of orientation was sponsored by hood milk. So these ideas are everywhere. So it's, it's not unreasonable that we think that, every, that our children need dairy and that they need to have their eight ounces of milk a day. Um, but if you have skin issues, you know, the eczema was very much solved by taking out dairy. Um, and I think, you know, if you think of what happens when, when you know, dairy or when a, a dairy ages, it turns into cheese and it gets, it gets all glutinous. So imagine what that does to your sinuses and to your ears and, you know, all those things. So if you're feeling any of those, dairy is a great thing just to try, just to try to take it out and see how you feel. Like, this, none of this is the answers, it's just these are things that affect a wide range of people. So just trying to take it out is a great, you know, it's a great tool. It's great to understand how it makes you feel when you take it out. Um, and sort of simple tweaks, like if you're feeling like, oh, I'll never have anything. Like nut milks are amazing and rampant. Um, smoothies can be made where an avocado or cashews or a frozen banana really make it creamy so you can have that like milkshake feel but without the milk and then one of our family favorites is what I call cashew cream and the recipe for that is also in your packet and cashew cream is basically like whipped cream made out of cashews and we eat it over fresh berries we make parfaits with it um, it's we love it in this house and it's a great thing for summer, so highly recommended, and you have that recipe in your packet. So I could have shown us this picture of all the different dairy, but you know, it's in everything. And by the way, eggs, I don't consider dairy. Eggs are sort of different, and I'm not going to go into eggs today, um, but that would sort of be a different test later. I think gluten and like the milk kind of dairy is a, a better first test, unless you've been to a doctor and they've told you to take out eggs. So then sugar. So I think we sh think of sugar like we all know that we've all heard that we eat too much sugar in our society. But 
then I think we immediately go to the fact of, you know, but we're not eating, I'm not eating sugar cubes like this. But if you're eating anything out of a box, it has sugar in it, like lots of sugar, like more sugar than you could imagine. So many things at restaurants, like not high-end restaurants, but just like the restaurants we might take our kids to, are filled with sugar. Sauces, dressings, like all these things have a lot of sugar. If you have one can of soda, you've had one and a half times already the amount that the FDA recommends of sugar that you have in a day. So it's a lot of sugar and it's adding up. And right now, like in the past 50 years, we have like, I think it's like 10 times the amount of sugar that we used to have. I have to look up that exact fact, but some huge amount. We have so much sugar right now. So don't just discard this as something that you don't do. Like really start to look at what it's in. And I'm actually not such a huge believer um, that fruit sugar is bad. So you have to sort of go with your, you'll sort of start to go with your gut on that. You know, some people say that I think there's different rules if you're you're pre-diabetic, but but for me, fruit and vegetables are free reign because they're they're nature's food and they're amazing. But I'm talking like the processed stuff. I'm talking, look at this, look at this grocery store. <laughs> That's like so much sugar, so much sugar. Like a, an action that you can take this week is just avoid the whole middle section of a grocery store. Just do the edges. Uh, that's an easy way to avoid all this stuff. But there's so much sugar. So if you're buying stuff from those boxes, read the labels and just become an educated consumer. Always look for sugar. Um, even on like, you know, dairy-free yogurt or, you know, even things that you might not think, you know, even on nut milk labels, like make sure you're getting the plain because the other ones are sweetened. Like you have to read every label, even at Whole Foods. You have to read the labels because there's sugar. So reading labels is, is huge like uh, and, and an art. So look for sugar and also look for any ingredients that you don't understand. If there's too many ingredients you don't understand, I recommend avoiding. But um, you know, you'll, you'll sort of figure out what your next doable change is around that. Um, but know that an easy solution is that real food, it just it doesn't have labels. So you don't even have to learn. If you're just buying real food, you don't need to read labels. You just need to see how much it costs, see if you can get it. And in the summer months, it's, it's, it's a great time. So I want to leave you with this. Well, I'm not done yet, so don't leave me because I've got something really excited that I, I want to share with you. But I just want to fin- conclude this thought with the idea that, you know, schools are trying, um, but our kids don't eat breakfast and dinner there and we never eat there and the government is talking and trying to make changes but they're in reality still supporting big farms and and ideas that we don't might not all want and there is more and more media about eating well and even though McDonald's has salad and puts that on billboards why would you walk into a McDonald's and smell those fries and want a salad that's sort of the challenge. It's hard. And I feel like we as parents have this opportunity, this unique opportunity to change the future for ourselves, like our future and the future of our kids. And I feel like it just takes a little bit of awareness, some commitment, and one doable change at a time. And I'm hoping you're in. Are you in? So with that, I've shared a lot. I've given you a lot of resources. I feel like you could take the workbook you have and really do well this this summer. Um, I added in some extra sheets about planning your summer, which I'm actually doing a live workshop about on Tuesday. So check your inbox about that. And I always want you to consider what it's like to take one doable step at a time. Like always have that in your head. Every Friday when you're sitting down to make that plan, think about, like, what's your next doable step? Like, th- And they can be small. It could be, you know, maybe this weekend I'll add one more fruit to my day or I'll dr- be really conscious about the water I'm drinking or we'll make an effort to always have Sunday dinner together. 
you know, they don't have to be like these huge things where you overhaul everything, but they're always, it just makes you getting more and more conscious about food. And then what you'll find is when you show up to, you know, the block party and there's this smorgasbord of stuff that you don't really want, you're going to start to become aware of that and you're going to start to make different choices. And because of all this and because it's like a, because I, I went through the change and I did it kind of alone but I feel like I gained so much knowledge and I've had so much fun working with busy moms over the past four years doing this work I today want to offer Plan Simple Meals Live which is my six week class it's all online that really gets you like into all, everything we talked about today and so much more um, because it really dives into the food at a bigger level but and we just go so deep we it's it's just amazing and I offer this because I don't want daily meal planning to be another stressful item on your to-do list and I feel like that if you really want feeding your family to be fun and easy and you really want to instill healthy habits that will support your children throughout your life this is an amazing program and I'd like to say the only one like it. I don't, you know, I'm the only me, so I guess it is the only one like it. I guess I'm saying that truthfully. <laughs> um, but it really does join, like, the family part and the personal part to the food part in a way that I, I don't think exists anywhere else. And here's what you'll get. You'll really be able to bring clean eating to the next level. And we're going to sort of go through this literally one meal at a time. Like one week is about breakfast, one week is about lunch. Like we go through that. And you'll learn simple tools that will keep you eating well through the summer, but also beyond because we'll sort of, you know, we'll get you thinking about what happens as you're going back into the school year. And you'll learn how to infuse food into your lives that's gluten-free, dairy-free, and processed sugar-free. So you'll have lots of great recipes and I'm excited, really excited for what I'm going to share for you in a minute because not only this time are you going to have recipes, you're going to have some hands-on support to really figure out how to make this food good and so that you love it and so that your kids love it. And you're going to learn how to streamline preparing healthy meals and snacks to make your time in the kitchen happy and purposeful. So I don't, it doesn't do any good if we dread the time in the kitchen. So even if we're eating everything healthy, if you dread making food and you dread eating, it's, it's not going to matter. Like the healthy food is not going to matter. You, those two things, the how and what we eat, need to exist together. And you're going to also enjoy consistent support as you create this new rhythm in your life and really bring your food, your family, and your life to the next level. And the support is going to be both from me and from an amazing group of women that I'm hoping to attract and show up and you're going to support each other. And so at the end of six weeks, you're going to have all the information that you need to make healthy happen every day. And here's what you're going to get. Here's what the modules are. We're going to spend one week on really great goal setting and we're going to there's so much in this. This is a hugely this is largely a sort of journaling time, but then you're going to have lots of different food prompts within this week to get yourself really fueled. Um, and then we're going to spend the second week really finding your food, really experimenting with the food part um, and figuring out what you want to take out, what you want to play with, um, experiment with taking out and adding in and all that stuff. And we're really going to make a, a, a food plan that you can stick to. And then we're going to get into planning for good meals. So once you figure out sort of what you want to eat, how you put that into meals on a weekly basis and show up every week to have this food. So it's not like you do it for 21 days and then you're done and then, you know, a child gets sick or you go off on vacation and you, you can't get back to where you were. And on week three, we also dive into um, breakfast. Is that true? Well, so either week two or three, we dive into breakfast. And then um, like, like on a very hands-on way and then in week four we really so we've made this plan like which is a little bit more calendar based and logic based and then in week four we figure out how to set that rhythm into motion so that it becomes less something you have to think about and more something that you just do which is key to making good decisions and that week I think we dive into lunch 
and we really get great at making amazing lunches and we'll talk about picnics and all that kind of stuff. And then week five, we talk about creating a tribe to support you. So you can't do this all alone. You need to bring your family into it. You need to have friends that want to eat with you. You need to create a tribe. And you can also consider this everyone here as your tribe. And I want you to be able to lean in on people and ask people questions. And you know, if you get stumped you know, 12 weeks from now, do you have someone who you can bounce ideas off of? Like what if your mother-in-law keeps giving your child a lollipop and it's driving you crazy but you're not sure how to deal with it in a great way? Like I want you to have a community of people that you can talk about those things with because otherwise they just become frustration and then food becomes frustrating and family becomes frustrating and that is not what we want. So week five we talk about creating your tribe and th at that point we week four and five we really dive into dinner and you know what that means and how your tribe can help you and how your rhythm can help you and what the food looks like. And then in week six, we get into celebrating everything. So not only celebrating all your sort of micro wins and big wins that you're going to be experiencing, but then also getting into holidays and how we deal with those. And this falls right before the 4th of July, which in the U.S. is a big holiday and, and sort of that weekend that gets some people off track in their summer. So we'll have lots of strategies like very tangible strategies around that but then we also talk about birthdays and holidays and you know you'll have content that about Christmas and Thanksgiving that you might not care about right in July but you can you can pull from later because you will have access to this forever and then I have a bonus this time that I've never done before so we're gonna try it out it's a bonus because I'm like 95% sure it's all gonna work and it's gonna be great but I just you know want to give myself that 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 leeway but I'm gonna do three live cooking classes for you and the and they're gonna be on Sunday afternoons I think it's the they're gonna be the um, third fourth and fifth Sunday of the the class I don't know I was avoiding holidays and Father's Day so so it's the Sundays that don't have holidays and Father's Day involved in them and they're going to be in the afternoon and they'll be recorded so you can access them another time but literally I you could be in your kitchen with me and we're going to plan out like what you can do for the week we're going to cook a few things and you know a, a lot of I do hold local cooking classes and people say that they really get a lot out of that and they love that so I'm going to try to mimic that online and I'm really excited about that so you will get that if you are part of this so I really 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 want this to be like affordable and doable and I think I've made it that way there's a do-it-yourself version which actually for this version will not have those live cooking classes and I'm actually sort of dissuading people from getting that although if it's what you can afford then I I recommend you getting something so feel free to get that but for 250 you get everything I just talked about plus we're gonna have um, a weekly call that you can ask questions and I'm doing the call this time two times a week so you could show up twice a week if you wanted it's gonna be on the same day but it's just a different time so that everybody can show up and both calls will be recorded in case there's different kinds of questions and you will also get a six-month membership to the lab which is something I totally pre-launched a few weeks ago a little bit too early but will be definitely ready by the end of this and I feel like you need this in order to succeed in the lab so the lab is a place where you can tune into weekly every Friday to sort of figure out what your next doable changes and get some training around that and support support from a community but if you don't do this initial body of work I'm I'm found it's not it doesn't make as much sense I, I can't be as good of a teacher but you will get um, Six, a six month membership to that which I'm super excited about and if you register by the early bird time which is Wednesday you'll get a free one-on-one -on -one call with me and that will be or a bonus one-on-one -on -one call with me and that will be to really for me to hear where you are and just give you a few strategies of where I think you can spend some time like where I know you should spend some time within the six-week class so you make sure that you're doing the things that really are gonna get your family to the next level um, and then I can also talk through like specific needs at that time so you know if you're dealing with a specific allergy or um, 
you know, you're dealing with a specific family issue or whatever, then we can troubleshoot those during that call. So I'm, you know, I'm hoping not, not more people than I can handle sign up for the early bird, but I, I, if everyone signs up for that, like this, like the one-on-one -on -one call itself is sort of the price of the class for sure the three live classes like when I do a live class in my kitchen it's a hundred dollars so three of them is more than this plus you get the whole class so this is like the best that I've ever offered um, if you really feel like you're wanting private um, attention you can definitely apply for that but what I really 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 encourage everyone to do is just do this middle one and if you end up wanting private attention we could always upgrade you or whatnot but I would love to have a really vibrant, great group going in to our VIP, which is just starting shortly, starting in just a week. So join us, please. It will be so much fun, and I really, really believe that this can, this will change your life, but it will really change your summer, which I know is immediately ahead of you. And I just feel like the summer is that time where we can lose track of all this you know, we have these intentions of it being relaxing and beautiful and whatever, but, you know, we still might have to work. The kids are still in camp. Sometimes they're in a different camp every week. You know, we have to put stuff together in a different way. We go on vacations. And it's it's a way where we want to be our healthiest. Like, you know, it's a time when we imagine our energy and on the beach and on vacation with our kids and hiking and all these things. And then sometimes we don't fuel our bodies in that way and we don't set ourselves up so that we can act those way. So so I know that this is a transformi transformative time to do this work. So here's what some mamas have said, which maybe you've already read, that I just want to say that I was skeptical that adding anything to my schedule was actually doable. I'm happy to report that these are truly manageable tasks. Thank you for being true to your word. And then I have never thought I would be cutting out all the foods you suggested, but here I am about five days into clean eating, and I already notice a huge difference in my mood, general well-being. So thank you for making a plan that starts small. It really allows you to go into a lifestyle change as opposed to making aggressive changes that have always led to failure. And then the third person is Star. She said for weeks she'd been weighing herself daily, no movement. But this week she lost two and a half pounds, and so she's certain this is because of our basic tips. And so this is not, like for me the sign was weight, but this does not have to be about weight loss. Like this is about so much more. Sometimes I see those skinny kids and I'm just like, they're just not getting nourished enough. Like the outside does not always tell the inside, but I, I do think it's a blessing when the outside has us look at the inside. <laughs> um, so the URL link is here. It's also below. You can click on it. We have a sales page that is like literally uh, very long. It's a Bible worth of, of reading. So you can read all about everything that's being offered in more detail. Um, please sign up. If you sign up by Wednesday, again, you get that those amazing early bird special and, and you get the bonuses. And yeah, and I, and I I'm so excited, so excited. So if you did this whole video and you didn't go through all the worksheets, then definitely, definitely do that, all right? Because even if you just do that, you're gonna be like one, you know, one step more toward this healthy goal. But I promise if you sign up, you will not regret it. And, and I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you on the other side. So I just also wanna say about, repeat that Facebook thing, so below here, there's the link to the sales page and also the link to our private Facebook group, but you can also just comment below the video if you loved it, if you have a question, we would love to hear it. Um, I will be in both Facebook, like I'll be here and in the Facebook group throughout the day, so I am happy to field questions, more than happy to field questions um, about anything, and yeah, I'm super excited. Spread the word if you know anyone who would love this. I, I'm just going to share a quick story and then I'm going to end that this week um, a very good friend of mine said she really wanted to do a soup cleanse and I had never done such a thing. I've done a lot of juice cleansing and a lot of smoothie sort of type cleansing and raw food cleansing but I had never done a soup cleanse um, which is an Ayurvedic thing. So I said yes and she gathered a group of four of us and she gave us this recipe book um, that was amazing. It's called Alina's Soup Cleanse and we did it together 
and we had a text group chat and we shared food with each other so we would like make double batches and we would share it with each other and then we would check in with each other if we got a headache and we would check in with each other when we needed to pick up a kid and it was wonderful so if you have friends who want to do this definitely share it because having a posse do this work is also amazing and you guys could even get together you know one day a week even if the kids are running around the yard and do the work together which would make it just even you even more sure that you do the work and that you you leave with this amazing plan and and all these amazing tools for your healthiest life yet so all right i'm going to say goodbye and have a fabulous day and definitely reach out with comments and questions and do the work <laughs>